This is Pays. In a pod. Join us as we make missionaries who make missionaries. Hello everyone and welcome back to Peas in a Pod. We are super excited to be continuing our series on Kingdom Principles. I hope you have been enjoying them. If you haven't heard the other ones, go back and have a wee listen um, to the series that we have got going on. So today we have another wonderful guest with us, the wonderful Chris Nunes, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. She has been with Pace for a number of years and she's going to tell us all about how um, the principles have um, been implemented in her life and how they can make a difference in yours too. So I would love you, Chris, to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are. So I'm Chris, I'm from Brazil and I've been with Pace for three years, almost three years now. And I love being here in England. So I started in Pace Brazil, but now I'm here and I love being here. And I'm currently a training assistant, so helping the teams and helping uh, them to be trained and, and yeah, do what we do and, and help them along their journey as well. Wonderful. Yeah. So you have trained in beautiful sunny Brazil yeah. for rainy Lancashire. Yeah. Um, the adjustment is huge. Yes, <laughs> it is. But you're quite used to it. But I'm it. used to it you now. It's just take some vitamin D and feels that it's fine. <laughs> yes, yeah, make sure, <laughs> make sure you take those. You know, I, I was told so, um, one time that people in the UK should take vitamin D for at least six months of the year. Mm-hmm. And that's the people who actually like are from here. Yeah. So even more for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, extra dose. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, it's so good. So we usually start off with a little bit of a game mm-hmm. um, here on the PS in a pod. And so I'm going to start with the game and, and it's a little bit of a, a twist on a very popular radio show game. Mm-hmm. So hopefully um, we don't, you know, get them coming after us, but I think we'll be okay <laughs> um, today. But yeah. I would love to read out some opinions to you. Okay. okay. And I want you to tell me what you think. So people all over the world have differing opinions. People yeah. within the same household have differing opinions. Mm-hmm. And do you know what? We like to be opinionated, don't we? Yeah. But there are some interesting opinions that I would like your thoughts on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Your instant reaction. <laughs> don't think about it. I just want oh, your instant okay. reaction. Okay. So first one, I think has to be one of the biggest polarizing opinions. Mm-hmm. Um, in the world is should pineapple be on pizza? I think yes. Pineapple uh, belongs on pizza. If you asked me like two weeks ago, no, a month ago, I would say no, a positive no. But whereas like a couple of weeks ago, I had it, I tried it again, and I'll say yes now. Yes! I'm saying oh, yes to pineapple you pizza. You've been won over. I've been won over, yes. Wonderful. I feel like we just lost half of our audience. In oh, no, very please moment. don't do that. Um, we, can, you can, we can still be friends. <laughs> we can still be friends. It's That's okay. Okay, next one is, I know you like both of these shows, so... Mm-hmm. It's going to tell us a little bit um, about the fact that you you like comedies, okay? So, this polarizing opinion is, How I Met Your Mother is better than Friends. No. (laughs) No? I love How I Met Your Mother, but no way it's better than Friends. Friends Friends. is the the most classic sitcom, like, comedy ever. Friends is iconic. Yeah. I have to agree. I have to agree. Okay, this one is, I love a spoiler. Oh, no, 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 please don't. I hate spoilers. Don't give me a spoiler yeah. ever. Okay. That, that, go back to the pineapple side and we keep, we're going to be friends and this one, we might not. I'm <laughs> joking. Yeah. No, I, yeah, yeah I, I understand. I, I don't like spoilers either. So this, this works. This works. Yeah. I think, I think we, we're getting along so far, Chris. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Okay. So my last one is rare spec is the best. Oh, okay, so I would say no <laughs> to that because in my conceptions, I don't like when there's blood on the plate. That's too much for me. So if there's not blood, it's juice. Yeah, if this juice, if you put your fork in it and you cut it like a, with a knife, a slice of it, and there's blood spilling on your plate, that's a no for me. So okay. I'll say no to that. Okay, I, I love a rare shake. Mm-hmm. So my, my dad would be 
sad that I said that. He would be like, why did the, the cow died in vain? Oh, really? <laughs> he would say that. That's, that's interesting. But I know in, in Brazil, you love your steak, so... Yeah, that is, that is one way. I don't think you can go wrong if you give a Brazilian a steak. No, you cannot. Definitely not. Unless they're vegan. Unless they're vegan, <laughs> so true. Are there many Brazilian vegans? Not that I know. If you're not. a Brazilian vegan out there, leave us a comment. I'd love to know. Yeah, uh, me too. I, I don't think I know one. Interesting. There we are. We'll find out anyway, potentially. Um, we'll keep an eye on the comments. Amazing. So now I feel like we know you a little bit better. Um, people know that you do not like spoilers, but you love Hawaiian pizza. So there we go. Hawaiian pizza and a movie with no talking is probably the best situation. Yeah, fabulous. <laughs> no talking. Yeah, because you know you don't want someone to spoil what's going on. Oh happen. yeah, yeah, with, yeah. No talking during the movie. Yes, yes, okay, exactly, exactly. Yeah. exactly. You know what? No talking in general. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> no. Okay, see. Yeah, we love talkings. That's why we're here. Yeah, <laughs> true story. <laughs> Amazing. So I would love for you to um just chat a little bit about your experiences with Kingdom Principles. Mm -hmm. So obviously you started your journey with PS in Brazil, and mm -hmm. that's your first experience of hearing. On the Kingdom Principles. Tell me what that was like when you first heard the Kingdom Principles and what sort of impact that made on your life. Yeah, the first time that I heard was during a foundation of training back in Brazil. So it's like we, what we do when we join FACE. Um, and I heard Melissa, who's still there in the FACE Brazil team, uh, and I heard her talking about it. And my first thought was this is going deeper than, like, going deeper than. Then I was reading those same passages before. It's like mm -hmm. it's taken to the next level. What have we looking? How to take that to the next level? How we need to go looking more into what uh, those Bible verses or those parables have to say, yeah. and then taking that to more a practical way. So not losing the practical out of it. Um, and I realized that today I work this church was from Pace Brazil. For those watching on um, for those, I'll, I'm gonna read it for you. So it says basically. Seek first the kingdom of God, and yeah, so it's just, I even bought the shirt back then, at that, during that time, because uh -huh. that was a big impact, and I wear it all the time, um, but yeah, so that was a, a big impact, like how to seek God first, and how to actually make him, his, his principles applicable to my life, yeah. Amazing, that's so good, yes, and I'm sure they probably still do that merch in Brazil. Yeah, <laughs> so they can still buy it through SM, yeah. the Pays Brazil merch. Yeah, she uses it as a gift and a bunch of these to people as well. There it's we like go. such a nice deal. Go promo, go promo. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, and so then um, I'd love for you to introduce us to the kind of principle that you are talking mm -hmm. about today. Um, give us a wee introduction. Yeah, so today I'm talking about reaping and sowing, and and the first idea that we can have in our minds is that we we everything that we do, we have this expectation that everything will turn out perfectly the way that we thought it would, mm -hmm. and most in most cases that's not the realistic way. It's not what's going to happen because we have this expectation, we have this image, and then by the time that things actually happen, it doesn't look quite the same as we thought it would. Yeah. So that's our first thought when we think about reaping and sowing, like what have we been doing good? Are we gonna get good from it or doing bad and getting bad from it? That's the for like, it's a human thought. And and it's also in the Bible, it's a, mm -hmm. there is a Bible verse, it's Galatians, I think six, let me just double check. Um, Galatians six, seven to 10. Do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked, a man reaps what he sows. So it's also a principle in the Bible that says you mm -hmm. reap what you sow. Um, but then we need to go deeper into that because as, as I said, it's, it's like about kingdom principles. You look at, you can might look at things and, and think about something and then there's more to uncover. Yeah. So I would say that that's the, that's what we're going to so like, we need to uncover, uncover more. Really, yeah. So what, that means actually uh -huh. like that's almost the verse that you might skip over yeah um, in the bible when you're reading it it just sort of says says a little bit and you read what you saw and you can move on <laughs> to the next yes. passage but actually it's good to stop and be yeah. like wait what does that actually mean mm. um i mean for my life yeah i guess that happens because we are used to as people like human beings we are used to live by that mm. principle like normal like we do what we do we're gonna have something in return yeah, it's it's something that, that people 
will talk about in their mm. life in general yeah. and call it different names yeah. and say that this is this is something that can yeah. happen. Um, it, most people know like, oh, if you put a lot of effort into something, mm. you'll you'll probably get a return. Yeah, and it's like as I said, people might call it different names, but then it's going from calling those different names and reading this passage and going further than that and just saying what is the reason mm. why like what is behind that what is behind that thought of like ripping and sewing what is what what is driving that yeah that's what we're gonna look for yeah that's good mm. and i know that there's a parable um yeah. that sort of goes alongside this um mm. i'd love for you just to unpack that a little bit for us yeah i'm not gonna read the entire uh, Bible verse, but it's Matthew 25 from 1 to 13 and it's talking about the bridesmaid and, and the oil that they had, so I'm going to read the first part. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the br bridge, no, sorry, bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise, and five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take a long extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and they fell asleep. And I'm going to skip a little bit ahead. Um, so when he actually turned up later, um, some of them will have to go and buy some extra oil. The her face here now. So, uh, some of them would have to go and buy some extra oil. And then the bridegroom comes, and the ones that were there, the five that were wise and had extra oil, mm -hmm. they're ready for him. And that the other ones who had to go away, they're not even there for, for him. And then he'll, they'll, they'll ask uh, to them, can you, before they go to buy some more, they'll ask the other bridesmaid, can you lend me some? Can you give me some? And they'll say no. And most of the times we look at that like, oh, they're not generous. And that's what we are looking into. Like, we're thinking, oh, you're looking at that just because it's talking about they're not being generous. Mm -hmm. Or uh, even like they're not being uh, prepared. But at that point, if you think about it, they were prepared, but not with the completely prepared for it. They were like, yeah, there was more to do, but they didn't go the extra mile to, to do that. They didn't go to the trouble of actually doing. So if the first part is that they were prepared for that first part with enough oil for them to come during that time, the, the time mm -hmm. that they, it was for the bridegroom to come. But then they actually had the money to buy some extra. So it's not that they were completely unprepared. They were mm -hmm. prepared to even go out and buy some more. Yeah. Um, but then when it got to the time, the ones that actually bought it in advance were the ones who were there for, for, for the bridegroom to, when he arrived. So yeah, so that's that's the first thought. But then we think, okay, what that has to do with Jesus? Why did Jesus told this to the disciples? Because this is the context of, of that past parable. It's that the, uh, he was actually talking to the disciples, answering a question of like, when are you returning them? Because he was telling them that I'm going to go, but then I will be back. Uh -huh. like, and they were asking, they were curious, yeah, where, when are you returning them? And, and Jesus told this parable in a way like, it's not for you to know where I'm, where I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. It's not for you to be like, I am coming back and these things will happen before I do. So he gave like a bunch of things that would happen before he did. He did. Um, we can see that in the Bible and other friends, like what is going to happen before. But he didn't give an actual time. And and the reason is, why, why are we doing with the waiting? What are we sowing? What are we doing with that time yeah. that, that is there? Are we going to invest everything that we have and be like the five bridesmaids and be prepared for the actual time that mm -hmm. he'll come? Or are we going to be prepared? Half prepared or just like not take a good look into everything in our life or just mm -hmm. take some parts and others we don't so what we're doing with the, the waiting mm -hmm. um for them for us to be prepared for his second coming or even to smaller things like in our life what are we doing with that time for things that we want to happen yeah in, in our life now in the future yeah um yeah so that that's the the first um part of it uh -huh. So that's, and, and it's really good to think about that and think about, okay, so in this time, we have, we have this time where Jesus says, you're going to wait for my return. Um, and we're living in that right mm -hmm. now. Um, yeah. We're waiting. So, so do we just sit and wait 
Um, or do we actually mm-hmm. sow into the things yeah. that are going around, on around us? Do yeah. we actually get stuck in? Um, yeah, it's such a, such a good thing to think about. And, and that thing of those bridesmaids actually put everything in mm-hmm. so that they were, they were so prepared. Um, and like you said, it wasn't about the generosity or the lack of generosity. They, they had given everything. They'd given yeah. as much as they yeah. could. And so how do we give as much as we can give? Yeah. So first of all, is I think it's getting to discover what is it that you have now? Like, what is it have you have now? Do you have people around you that can invest your life in? Do you have uh, your talents, your abilities? What is it that God gave you to you right now at this exact moment that you can use in every single way to to sow? You are mm-hmm. sowing in so many different ways. So you can sow um, at um, at a, um, let's say you sow into getting to uh, a job that you would like. For example, you you spend time studying to get that job, mm-hmm. and then once you get that, like you have you still have to sow into more of learning, understanding what you're gonna do to get a, a better payment or to get a better position. So for example, when you are trying to apply for, for a job or something, you apply for a job and then you go from, um, you, that you're accepted at that place, but you've sold for such a long time to be able to, to do that. And then you still have to keep selling your, like, still have to be investing in yourself and giving time to, to study, to get a better position. And so that takes, that takes some time and, and it takes some, a lot of investment in selling yourself in your own life. And one thing that we saw here was like uh, one of the teams here, like, and this is what happens with Facebook. Like you have a team that comes, and the next year we have a different team. Mm-hmm. Um, but for years we have been trying to go into a school, and we've been investing, we've been communicating to teachers, we've been talking in emails, like how we can go, how we can help you, and the whole reason is like how we can help you mm-hmm. and all that. And and then it took years for, for, for us to be actually able to, to go to, to the school. And this year, one of the teams, they're, they're actually going to that school. And they are, like, reaping what other teams sold back in the, yeah. in the past. So there's also that. Like, you have to not only sow to yourself, but you sow for others, people, other people to reap as well. Like, yeah. you're, you're, you're looking for... Um, there is there is a reason that you're looking for. Um, mm-hmm. So you're doing that, and you want to reap that. You want to have that around you, or have that, and other people might do might reap what you sow as well. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's really important. powerful. Yeah, yeah, and it's really powerful to think in that way of of what we are sowing into isn't necessarily for us to reap. Yeah, um, I think we can we. We live in this instantaneous world, don't we now? Yeah. You want things to happen instantly. You know, I love just being able to hit a button and watch whatever I want to watch instead of having to wait for it to come on at 8pm. Yeah. You know, we live in this instantaneous world even more so uh, than, than back in the day when the disciples were with Jesus, you know. And I'm sure they were like, we want this to happen now. Like, when is this going to happen? And so when we live in this instantaneous world, we expect what we sow into happens mm. instantly. You know, if we buy something on Amazon, we expect it to arrive the next yeah. day. But that's not mm. what happens with the kingdom. The kingdom yeah. is so much bigger than, than time. Like God lives outside of time. And so mm. um, when we sow into something, that is really exciting to think about someone else in the kingdom is going yeah. to reap what we sow. And, and ultimately it's all for God's glory. Yeah, and there are other uh, principles to the sowing as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this one, like, we might not reap, but someone else, like, you are reaping for other people. Uh, sowing, sorry, sowing for other people. But then there's uh, so many other different things, like, um, that's like you're sowing for a different season as well. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're, you stay, you have to stay in order, in order to, to reap what you sow, for example. So if you're sowing, like, you're planning on a year to have something uh, happening, you have to wait that year. So mm-hmm. you have to keep doing that until that, that year that you're actually yeah. going to read. Um, another principle is like not live in, uh, try to sow in the past as well, like mm-hmm. expecting, oh, this harvest was be, is going to be amazing, but you, yeah. you didn't do anything for that to be amazing. Yeah. Um, so all I expect, I expect 100 young people to be here at this Friday night. 
but then you haven't invited anyone you haven't went online or, or said like um in, send invitations or published anything on social media young people are all over social media so you haven't done mm -hmm. that so so many things that you need to do in order to uh reap what you want to that for sure yeah it takes yeah. takes a long time um yeah so it's, it's about like your heart and your investment and what you do during that time yeah. as well and how how much would you actually are willing to to do to get there mm -hmm. so how much yeah. are you putting your heart into into it and and yeah and you can also and this is i think this is the most for me for me it's the most important one it's like uh, how much you're investing in people in your relationships yeah. especially how, how are you investing in people around you if you're part for example if you're a part of a company and you invest in people around you they'll grow the company together mm -hmm. with you but if it's friends that we're talking about mm -hmm. and you invest in the, your friends like you grow as, as, as people together yeah. you, you so it's like um, how, how much you are you doing that with like how often and what is the quality of, of it mm -hmm. as well that you've been uh, sowing into people's lives around you. Yeah. So there's so many principles that you could actually use sure. that. Yeah, something I really think about when I think about this um, sowing and reaping idea is how people in the Bible, like you, you just read a story and the story of their life mm -hmm. could be two or three pages, but within those two or three pages, years, years. and years and years have mm -hmm. passed, Do you yeah. know, like, Think of Abraham, God speaking to him, saying, you will have a son. How many years was it between mm -hmm. that moment until he actually had Isaac? And it, in between, he decided, actually, do you know what? I think I'm going to have to make this happen for myself because I don't think God's actually doing it. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it's the same everywhere else. Maybe you're listening from all over the world. But within the UK, I think we have such a culture, especially my generation going down, um, of the flattiness mm. of of just sort of trying something for a short amount of time and actually being like oh no i'm not seeing any return yeah. on this yet and and also you have so many options of different things so you're like well i'll try that for three months and then i'll try this for you know six months and you know just jumping about all over the place mm. um but I think it's so important yeah. to stay rooted and yeah. and stay and persevere yeah. um, in what you're doing in order to see that. Yeah, I believe there are two things that in my head goes very well with that is that everything that you do, God will um, use that in the future. Mm -hmm. So even if you if you're if you're practicing something else, an instrument right now, and you don't play an event, but you're just trying to learn. And in the future, you might be able to do like worship in a church, for example, mm -hmm. they'll invite, invite, invite you to do, or something simple, even smaller than that. But yeah, so that, that, that's the first thing, it's like God will, will use what, what you are trying to, to learn and what you're getting from this moment yeah. now. So it won't be in vain, even like yeah. you're, you're investing, it won't, won't be in vain. So yeah. like you get something from it. A very easy example, like the, most like coming for me is to think about is like what what I did in uni yeah. and what you decide to do in uni and now I'm a face I'm an architect but how much I use from that like I use mm -hmm. so many things that I learned from when I was an architect yeah I use it now and I use like on daily like basis um, and then the second thing that during the time is like having faith as well mm -hmm. it's knowing the reason why it's the motivation behind it it's like it's what I said, persevering uh, through that time. It's, if, if, if you have this very clear image of the why you're doing it, mm -hmm. it's very important because in the, in the moment that you're feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm not really into that at the moment, or oh, I'm tired. But if you got back to that reason why you, you're actually putting yourself to do something, yeah. um, that will give you the boost to continue and to keep doing when you don't want to do or you're feeling tired of doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so there are so many different things that you can try to do during that time. Yeah. But it's thinking like with like God and faith, if you like you persevere and then how much you can mm -hmm. grow from during that time yeah. for you and use it in the future. Yeah, yeah. so good. And I know we, we have talked a lot around sort of practicalities, and mm -hmm. um, but if someone was sort of thinking about how to practically implement mm -hmm. this principle into their life, what would you say? I would say first thing is 
take some time and stop to analyze your life at the moment. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of time. You like say, oh, I don't have because when we think of, like investing, we think of, like money and think of, like oh, I don't have money to do this. Oh, I don't have like. But the thing that we have the most and the most valuable thing that we have is time. So what yeah. are you doing with your time right now? So stop. Uh, take a time to, like or during your day. Stop and think. What am I investing in my life now? Who are the people that I'm investing in? Who are the people that are going on the journey with me? And yeah, what what I want to get, like what I want to mm -hmm. rip in the future. What what exactly what I want for my future? So first, take that time to stop and then think of all those areas. And then the next step would be uh, thinking about the quality of the things that you've been yeah. doing and the quantity over the quantity and over the priorities of those things. So putting those things in, in a way like this is something that is just for me and I have this priority, but this is something that I, I want for my church or I want for my family. Mm -hmm. And then putting those in, in, in like a scale of like what you want to prioritize. And then this this time that you have now that is so pressure, you can actually use that to do something. Yeah. So I would say is take a time, look at the, like, the overall picture and then start to to, sh to actually... Um, shape or draw I like to draw so much so that's that's always in my head like how what you can draw in your life that you want to detach that you want to go yeah. and, and invest in people's lives and, and that yeah so I'll say that would be the way to take this that's so good to practicality just, yeah. yeah I think that's gonna be really helpful for some people who are listening in the podcast and like we all have the same amount of hours in the days and the weeks mm. and the years and so how can we actually take that and use it um, properly and to the best of our abilities for mm -hmm. the glory of the kingdom yeah. um, is, is such a good thing to do. Well, thank you so much, Chris. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's been <laughs> so good. It's been great to chat to you. And like always, please like, share um, the podcast with anyone that you feel like it, this might be good for them to hear. Um, follow us on YouTube listen to us on Spotify. We are all over the place, but we really enjoy um, hearing what you have to say. So please leave us a little comment. Um, you can go to our website, www.peersmovement.com to hear and find out more. There are so many ways of getting involved um, with what we have going on. But that is the podcast for today. And thank you all for listening. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you for joining us today. Find out more about Pays at paysmovement.com.